Hi everyone, I'm back to read chapter four called Rattlesnake from Happy Birthday Josefina, a springtime story, book four from 1824. Chapter four, Rattlesnake. Josefina said Mariana in a low voice. She saw the snake too. Josefina signaled Mariana to stay back. She had only one thought, she had to save Sombrita. Ever so slowly, Josefina sank down and picked up a rock. She held it out behind her to, to Mary, Mariana. Mariana understood and silently stretched out a hand to take it. When their hands touched, Josefina whispered, I'm going to get Sombrita. Don't throw the rock unless the snake moves, because if you miss, Mariana squeezed Josefina's hand. Then she took the rock. Very, very slowly, Josefina edged forward. She made a wide arc around the snake. Inch by anxious inch, she moved next to Sombrita, who for once stood still. Josefina stooped, gathered Sombrita in her arms, and straightened. Then everything happened so fast it was a blur. The, snow, the snake gave a menacing rattle. Mariana threw the rock at it and missed. The snake whipped its head around, shot forward, and struck Mariana on the arm with its fangs. Mariana, cried Josefina, as she saw her friend grab her arm and stumble back. Suddenly, furious, Josefina put Sombrita down and snatched up a rock. She threw with her with all her might. The rock hit the snake in its, in its middle, and with one last sickening hiss, the snake slithered away so fast it seemed to simply disappear. Mariana moaned, sinking to her knees as if all the strength had gone out of her. She didn't cry, but her breath was ragged. Her eyes were shut tight. Josefina bent over her friend. Let me see your arm, she said. Gently, Josefina took Mariana's hand, arm in her hands. You couldn't help gasping when she saw the two tiny holes where the snake's fangs had sunk in. The wound was an angry purplish color, and it was already beginning to swell. In her mind, Josefina heard Tia Magdalena's voice saying, if you don't get the venom out right away, it can kill you. Josefina spoke with urgency to Mariana. We've got to get you back to the Pueblo, she said. We need help. Mariana tried to stand, but dropped back on her knees. I can't, I go, can't go that far, she said in a hoarse whisper. Josefina's heart twisted with fear, and she knelt down and something hard in her pouch thunked against her. It was the global mallow root Tia Magdalena had given her. Without hesitating, Josefina took it out. She crushed the root between two rocks and spit on it to make it pasty. Then she pressed it against Mariana's arm where the snake had struck. She squeezed Mariana's arm gently to bring the venom up. Mariana whimpered, but she didn't pull her arm away. Again and again, Josefina pressed the crushed root against the wound. Again and again, she pressed Mariana's arm. Again and again, Josefina knew she had to stay calm, but she had to fight against a rising feeling of panic. The globe mallow didn't seem to be working. Mariana's arm was still swollen and bruised looking. Oh, how long would it take? What if she was using the root the wrong way? Perhaps she had misunderstood. What would happen to Mariana if the venom poisoned her blood? If only someone would come to help, but no one came. The minutes felt like hours. Josefina was just about to give up and run for help when, oh, at last, she heard Mariana take a deep, shuddery breath. Mariana opened her eyes and color came back to her face. Josefina said a quick, silent prayer of thanks. Then she asked Mariana, do you think you can walk if I help you? Mariana nodded. Carefully, Josefina helped Mariana stand. Mariana looped her good arm over Josefina's shoulder and and Josefina put her own arm behind Mariana's back to support her. Lean on me, Josefina said. Then she turned and looked down at Sombrita. 
Listen, she said to the little goat. Now you must really be my Sombrita, my little shadow. Stay right behind me. Do you understand? Sombrita seemed to. She stayed close to Josefina and Mariana every step of the weary walk back. Slowly, the two girls trudged along the path next to the stream. Slowly, they trudged up the long incline to the Pueblo. Josefina knew they had gone, uh, had been gone a long time, and Papa and Esteban would be worried. But she, she and Mar Mariana could not move fast. Their tired feet dragged. Their tired shoulders stooped. They were only halfway between the stream and the Pueblo when Josefina saw Papa and Esteban coming toward them. They had never been so glad to see anyone in her life. Papa and Esteban rushed to the girls and Josefina saw that their faces were tight with worry. Mariana said quickly, a rattlesnake bit me, but Josefina knew what to do. She smiled weakly at Josefina. Tell them, she said. Papa and Esteban stared at Josefina, but she was too worn out to explain. Instead, she held out her hand to show them the crushed root. It draws the venom out, she said. I had it in my pouch. Esteban's expression did not change. His voice was very deep when he said, Gracias, Josefina, gracias. He lifted Mariana up. Papa, Josefina, and Sombrita followed them the rest of the way back to the Pueblo. Later, as they were walking home to the rancho, Papa asked Josefina to tell him the whole story of what had happened. So Josefina did. She didn't leave out anything, even though she was out of breath, because she had to take two steps for every one of Papa's. They hadn't gone very far before Papa lifted Josefina and Sombrita up onto the mule's back. After that, Josefina couldn't see Papa's face, but somehow she knew he was still listening hard to every word she said. Josefina opened one sleepy eye. Could she be dreaming? It was not quite dawn, and yet she seemed to hear music. She sat up. Her sisters, Francisca and Clara, were gone from the room that they shared with her. Suddenly, Josefina grinned to herself. She remembered what day it was, the feast day of San Jose and her birthday. Very slowly, the door to her room opened. In the pearly morning light, she saw Papa, Tia Dolores, Anna and her husband, Tomas, Francisca, Clara, Carmen the cook, and her husband, Miguel. They began to sing. On the day you were born, all the beautiful flowers were born. The sun and the moon were born and all the stars. In the middle of the song, Sombrita poked her head around the corner of the door and bleated as if she were singing too. Everyone laughed and Tia Dolores said, we, we wanted to surprise you with a lovely morning song, but I think someone forgot the words. Josefina picked up Sombrita and gave her a hug. Gracias, she said to everyone, feeling a little shy at all the attention. I liked it. The morning song was only the first surprise in the day full of them. Anna made cookies called bizcochitos for everyone to eat before breakfast. At morning prayers, Francisca showed Francisca how she decorated the family altar with a garland of mint and willow leaves and how she'd sur surrounded the statue of San Jose, the saint Josefina was named for, with white uh, wild lilies and little yellow celery flowers. Clara, who liked to be practical, surprised Josefina by helping her with chores. But when it was time to dress for the party, Clara had an impractical surprise for Josefina. It was a dainty pair of turquoise blue slippers. It's about time I handed these down to you, said Clara. I hardly ever wear them. Oh, Clara, said Josefina, very pleased. She put the slippers on. They were only a little too big for her. If you're going to be so elegant, said Francisca, you'd better carry Mama's fan and wear Mama's shawl said Anna. The four girls shared Mama's fan and shawl and brought them out only on very special occasions. Josefina swirled the shawl around her shoulders and looked behind her to see the brilliant embroidered flowers and the slippery shimmery fringe on the back. 
She fluttered the fan and felt very elegant indeed. The party looked more elegant too. There was a beautiful cloth on it and the family's best plates and glasses and silverware. Tia Dolores had made a special fancy loaf of bread and there was meat turnovers and fruit tarts and candied fruit that looked like jewels. And best of all, in the center of the table, there was a red jar with one small branch of apricot blossoms in it. Josefina smiled when she saw the perfect blossoms. She knew that Tia, that Tia Dolores had cut the branch from her tree, the tree she liked to climb. Josefina remembered the day Tia Dolores had comforted her, comforted her next to that apricot tree. Um, we're all given second chances, Tia Dolores had said. We just have to be brave enough to take them. Soon music and laughter and happy voices swirled around the beautiful table. Friends and neighbors and workers from the rancho arrived, bringing small gifts of dried fruit or nuts, sweets or chocolate for Josefina. Esteban and Mariana brought a wonderful gift. It was a melon that had been buried in the sand since last fall's harvest to keep it fresh. When Josefina thanked her, Mariana said, it's not much, but my heart goes with it. Papa quieted everyone. Today is the feast of San Jose, he said, and today my daughter Josefina is 10 years old. I'm going to tell you a story about, about her. Josefina felt Mariana's hand slip into her own. They both stood still and eyes shyly cast down while Papa told the story of the, snap, the rattlesnake. Papa began at the beginning and told everything that had happened. He described the snake in such a scary way, it made everyone shiver. And when the story was finished, Papa called Josefina to him. He handed her something that looked sort of like a shell. It was rattles from the rattlesnake. I've saved these since I was a boy, just your age, said Papa to Josefina, to remind me of something I was proud of. Now I'm giving them to you because I am proud of you. Everyone clapped and Papa leaned down to kiss Josefina's cheek. Josefina thought uh, she had never in her life felt so happy or so proud. Suddenly, Tia Magdalena was by her side. Dear child, she said. Josefina smiled. She held out her hands to show Tia Magdalena the snake's rattles. I'm going to put these in my memory box, she said. They'll remind me of the moment when I found out something important about myself. I found that I am a healer. Tia Magdalena smiled deep into Josefina's eyes. See, she said simply, you are. Later that evening when the party was over, Josefina and Papa walked to the goat's pen together. They wanted to check on Sombrita, who, was, who had not been invited to the party. Sombrita was fast asleep. It's unusual to see her so still, isn't it? said Josefina. She and Papa smiled, looking at the peaceful goat. She's healthy and lively, said Papa. She might not have, uh, she may, might not have been if you hadn't kept your promise to take care of her after Floricita died. You gave her a second chance at life. Papa and Josefina walked back to the house. On the hillside, the flowering fruit trees in the orchard were lit by the moon, as if a pale cloud had settled on them. The night air was cool, but soft and softened by the scent of blossoms. Josefina took a deep breath. She thought the air smelled like apricots. Papa, she said, we're all given second chances. We just have to be brave enough to take them. That's what Tia Dolores says. Does she? asked Papa. Does she indeed? Okay, and that is the end of our book. Happy birthday, Josefina. Springtime Story, Book 4, 1824. And next time we will read Looking Back, A Peek into the Past.